G'day everyone. I thought I'd take you through today how I've set up my Sony A9 with the latest version 5.0 firmware. Um, I'm not going to go through what every menu actually is. I'm just going to show you how I've set my camera up at this stage. Uh, I may still change some little things later on. If I do, I'll certainly update uh, this video. But I just wanted to take you through how I've sort of set mine up to uh, start shooting. Um, so I'll take you through all the menus. Uh, show you each setting sort of what I've changed uh, and things like that and obviously if you have any questions you can leave those down below uh, and I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. Uh, so let's switch over to uh, this little ninja over here so I can show you what's going on on the screen. Um, now I did update the firmware yesterday as you know uh, just let me switch back here as you know uh, one thing to take note of is if you do update uh, you do lose all your previous settings, even if you've saved them. They've obviously done something quite drastic with the software and the camera because it does do a complete reset of everything, so you lose all of your settings beforehand. So I do recommend if you're going to uh, do the upgrade to version 5, and you definitely would because it's amazing, um, to write down what your settings are before you do it. Uh, and therefore you'll know what you've changed and things like that. But there's no point saving it to a disk and taking it over, it just won't work. Um, so let's switch over. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take you through all of the menus. Um, so to start with, I always shoot with the file format. You've got multiple choices there. Like I said, I'm not going to go through everything though, but I will talk about the main things. Um, I do always shoot RAW and JPEG, and I'll explain a little bit later how that's set up on the cards, but I do always shoot RAW plus JPEG. Uh, I like to shoot RAW onto one card and then JPEG onto the second card. Uh, it's just a good way of backing up, uh, and I don't need two versions of RAW. If there is an error, I can get by with the RAW. I usually try and expose as close as possible uh, to the right amount, so uh, I can usually get by with the JPEGs. And particularly now the JPEGs are so good, often I will just use the JPEG and not the RAW files. Um, RAW file is compressed and uncompressed. Well, I'm actually going to keep that on compressed. I've tested it and I can't see any difference at all. Look, that's going to be up to you whether you'd like to change that or not. Um, some people have said they can see uh, artifacts in, in some gradients and things like that if you use uh, compressed, but I, I haven't seen it. So I'd prefer to save a little bit of the file size, so I'm going to leave that in uh, compressed. Uh, the JPEG quality there is extra fine. You can choose from fine or standard. I like to have the best JPEGs that I can get, so that's why I've put that down as, as extra fine. Let me just turn down the volume there. Um, JPEG image size, again, will be large, so I've put that on the L24, so it is the largest uh, size. Again, I want all the data that I can get, so like I said, sometimes I'm using the JPEGs on their own, so I do like to uh, keep those at the largest size possible. Um, there as well. Aspect ratio, this is where you can change it if you were going into say doing uh, Instagram, you could put it one to one, so that's one place where you could do that. Um, obviously you could go 16.9 if you want to shoot straight for video, uh, or 3.2, and I'm leaving it on 3.2, I generally tend to crop it in post because uh, I'm actually saving in multiple places, or posting in multiple places, so I'd like a full image to say you go out to uh, Facebook, uh, and then I, I will crop it down square if I want to go to Instagram and things like that. But if you are only shooting Instagram, it's a nice feature that you can just shoot in square. Or you may just want to shoot in square and get that printed that way. So it is a nice feature because you can see it in camera. Um, APS-C cro uh, crop mode, I obviously live on auto. Uh, sometimes I'll even turn that off. Uh, well, it's it, it may be a couple of times, but I like to actually use something like this lens here, which is the 10 to 18. Uh, and you can shoot that in full frame uh, from 12 to 16 millimeter, uh, but only if you turn the cropping off in the menu. If you don't do that, it will treat it like an APS-C lens, uh, and it will crop it in for you, and you go to Super 35 mode. Um, so I find that if I want to get something really wide, like around the 12 millimeter area, I'll actually go to this menu, uh, and I will turn that APS-C code off. If you wanted to run with it on all the time, uh, for instance, if you're shooting video, you can turn that on as well. Um, but I'm just going to leave it on auto, and then if I put an APS-C lens on, it will automatically correct. Or if I want to override that, I know where I can get in there just to turn that off. So that's the other thing that I change. Um, long exposure noise reduction, I turn off. 
Uh, I don't want any noise reduction in camera at all. I prefer to do it in post. Uh, where I've got full control over the amount of noise reduction that's being done to it. Uh, so I turn that off and that includes also high IAS, ISO noise reduction. You may vary from that if you want, if you think it works for you. I just don't like it personally, so I turn it off. Color space, uh, my lab wants sRGB, so I just leave it in SRB. If, if you are printing yourself or you were only looking at things on the screen for instance, uh, stuff like that. You can use Adobe RGB because that is a much bigger color space than what uh, sRGB is. But due to the fact that I'm just printing nearly all of the things that I'm doing, I'm leaving it on sRGB. You could work from Adobe RGB and then convert back when you're saving, um, but I leave everything on sRGB. Uh, lens comp, I don't touch. Self timer, don't change. Uh, same as this, priority set in AFS, I always leave these on balanced emphasis. Uh, so I don't change any of those at all. So I'll leave those just on balanced emphasis. Uh, focus area limit as well, I haven't changed. Uh, you can click onto these and turn them off if you don't want them. Uh, if you're finding you're going through, too far through the menus, you can actually click those off uh, if you like. So that's one other thing that you can actually do as well. Um, I'm tending to keep them on and then I can go through and check them. I very rarely change anyway. I'm, I'm usually only uh, using certain ones, which, which I'll explain a little bit later. Uh, but if you are finding that you do only use one or two ever, well then you could turn the others off if you wanted to. And all you do is you simply click the tick off uh, and that will take that off. Uh, switch, that area just basically relates to uh, if you're using your camera in portrait or landscape, uh, how your focus settings appear. Um, on there, and I do I do AF point and AF area. Um, let me keep going. AF illuminator auto, I haven't changed. Uh, face IAF set. Uh, I've got the right left eye on auto. Uh, you can change those, but I've put those on a quick key that I'll show you uh, later on. So it is on auto at the moment. So that's definitely a new thing that's come in. Um, face priority in AF, obviously uh, you turn on. Uh, if you want face detect uh, to have priority. Uh, and the other thing is frame, that will be off by default. This face detect frame display will be off. So if you're not seeing uh, the square come around the face, that's due to the fact that that's off in video, like in 4K and stuff. So you must make sure that that face detect frame display uh, is on. A of track sensitivity, haven't changed it. I'm just leaving it on standard at this stage. I'm gonna to have to play around and see how uh, they go. Obviously, you know, if you're dealing with very, very fast situations, you can uh, put it in onto responsive, uh, things like that. Um, but I'm gonna to have to play around with this new firmware and just see how all these settings actually uh, change it all. Um, AF with shutter, I've got off due to the fact that I'm using back button focus with the AF on button. I just like to work that way uh, just because it, it isolates the actual clicking of the exposure and also the focus. Uh, and if you don't, uh, if you take your finger off the back, you can just keep firing and, and your focus is locked at that last position. Uh, so that's handy. Pre-AF, um, I always turn off as well. I don't want that at all because that can cause issues as well. So that's uh, switched off at the same time. Um, AF area registration, I'm, I'm not doing any of these, so I'm not gonna go through them. I'm just explaining how my camera is set up. Um, now the only other thing I've changed is this circulate. The circ uh, circle of focus point basically means that your uh, AF point, I'll show you what it does because if we look at it, let me just change down here and I'll go to here, flexible spot. Now if you notice, I'll just bring it down to the bench. Uh, if you notice the flexible spot there, if I move over, it stops at the edge. That's because that's turned off. Now if I come to here and turn that to circulate, what it will now do is if I move it, it will come from the following side, so it just keeps circulating. I find that's a much quicker way to get around the camera, so I really do like that, so I use that uh, an awful lot. So. Uh, I'm actually going to leave that uh, on at this stage. Uh, well, probably forever. AF micro, just don't touch. Uh, ISO setting through here, um, that is determined on what your ISO actually is in the camera at the moment. Your range limit uh, would be set here as well. Now, you've got to determine what you're happy sort of working with. Um, I probably would tend to keep the ISO minimum at 100 
and then I'd set this probably to something like um, 6400. I don't like to go really over 6400, so I may keep it up that or take it to 80,000. It just depends. Uh, you're going to have to test it and see how the camera goes um, with uh, noise, but sometimes you're still better off to take to get the shot. That's what I'm trying to say to you. So you're going to have to work out what your tolerance is for what your highest ISO is probably going to be. And I might leave that at, um, say, 80,000, uh, 8,000 ISO, I mean. Uh, so I'm going to leave that. Um, auto ISO minimum, you can't set at this stage. Uh, let me just go back. Metering mode, obviously, will just be set depending on your metering mode. Uh, I'll talk about that in another lesson sometime. Face priority and multimedia is on. So I do want face priority to have, uh, well, priority, basically. And spot metering point is just kept at center. So I've just kept that uh, as standard. Like I said, I'm only really, oops, uh, going through things that have um, physically changed. Um, again, here, AEL with shutter haven't touched. Uh, exposure standard adjust haven't touched. Uh, flash mode, I've changed that to fill flash. Um, I usually like to start, I think that's the default actually. Uh, but that's usually what I do work with. Uh, flash compensation, obviously you can adjust from there. Exposure comp set, I always like ambient and flash because I do like the ambient and the flash to be balanced correctly. Um, wireless flash I turn on because all the strobes that I use, my pro photo lights and everything, have to have wireless flash on. So I leave that on. Red eye reductions are uh, not there because it's not available in this mode. White balance, obviously you can set through there as well. Priority set in order white balance. You can set in here whether you want ambience or whether you want uh, it to be a white uh, balance uh, setting. So it just depends really on what uh, look you're after. If you want it to be based on white, you can do that if you want to take the colors out. If you want to keep the ambient in the white balance, you can turn that on. And that's nice if you're working in areas where there's nice lighting and things like that. Uh, automatic white balance standard is that one. That's usually what I leave it on unless I want to control it, but I often do white balance manually anyway. Um, DRO uh, I turn off because I don't want any of those uh, dynamic range things or, uh, or anything put on, uh, so I turn them off. Uh, I like to expose correctly and I know how much I can bring that back in post, so I'll leave it off. Creative style is always standard for me. I shoot everything in standard profile. Shutter automatic white balance. You can click that on if you want the automatic white balance not to change. You can click that on when you half press the shutter button or if you're doing continuous shooting. Uh, so that's one thing to be aware of and that's really, oh, excuse me while I have a drink. So that's a really good uh, feature to have because sometimes particularly if you're shooting fast, uh, white balance can change quite drastically and that's not good. Uh, so if you do lock it, then you know it's, it's, it won't change for all of your shots. So that's a very handy uh, menu to have. Uh, focus magnifier, I haven't changed. Focus limit, I haven't changed. Initial focus magnification is the same. Uh, these are all the same. I notice your peaking setting. Uh, we've now got a new color in there, which is blue. Um, so you can go blue now. So it's nice that they've given us that as an extra uh, peaking. I've got that turned off at the moment. Uh, but I only really ever turn that on if I'm doing manual focusing and it's critical work. Uh, I often just like to use a monitor or something like that. But you have got that blue uh, there now if you need it. Obviously manual focus assist is on as well. Uh, so let's go to the next one. Face registration haven't touched. Uh, registers face priority is on but that's standard as it is. Um, now the movie mode, uh, all I've done here is obviously you choose your format uh, that you want to shoot with, whether it's 4K or, or um, HD. Your record setting is set through there. S and Q settings I haven't changed. Proxy settings I'm not using, I don't use proxy settings. It might be something in the future I will use proxy settings when uh, Sony release something that has 10 bit 422, something like that or higher bit rates. Uh, then proxy settings may work for me. At this stage, I don't need to do them because what it does, it just saves a smaller file that you can link to later on. Uh, but I don't need to do that at this stage. Uh, AF drive speed haven't touched. AF track sensitivity haven't touched. I might talk about those in another video at a later date. Uh, so none of this has been actually changed at all. So I'm going to go up to three. Audio level display is on. I think that's on uh, automatically though, so I haven't changed 
anything in this menu either on number three. Movie with shutter is on. I, I do like to start the movie with the shutter button, so I've turned that on. Um, shutter type I haven't changed. Uh, release without lens. I like to enable that because sometimes I do use uh, lenses and do sort of free lensing or whatever you call it. Uh, so I do like to have that as enabled, but I won't let it work without a cut. So uh, a card in the camera an SD card so I disable that and I think that's just a good thing to do it's just a safety uh, thing that you can never start shooting without a card in there uh, nothing else has been changed uh, on that one at all and nothing has been changed in the zoom um, so zoom settings I will change uh, for movie mode I'm not sure whether if I go into movie mode uh, clear image zoom I have turned on for movie settings so I do like the clear image zoom because that gives you the ability uh, if I use a quick key I can then zoom in uh, and I love that now this is a 35 uh, mil uh, here um, so just to have that ability where I can go like that is is amazing so I do use that all the time. Uh, so clear image zoom is, is a fantastic feature, uh, particularly if you, well, any lens really, because it just gives you more reach. Uh, let me just switch this back to manual again. All right, so clear image zoom is on. Um, it's not showing at the moment because I've selected raw. That's the thing, if you're on JPEG, you could do it in your JPEG settings. Um, display button haven't changed. Frame, uh, finder frame rate came in at high, uh, so I didn't have to set that. The only other thing I change in here, I run zebras and I run them on, and I run them at 95%. I find that that gives me a perfect reading. Also, I'm trying to use uh, some LUTs. Uh, the LUTs that I'm actually using are the uh, Leeming LUTs, and I know that it tells you if you're using Leeming LUTs to have a, a zebra setting of 95, so I have put that on. Uh, nothing. I haven't changed anything else in this at all. Um, live view display haven't changed. Uh, none of these I've actually changed. I do put auto review on for two seconds though. Now some people might say you don't need to. You don't need to do that um, because you're dealing with the mirrorless anyway and you do see it in the EVF. But the thing is I like to, I'm often shooting with flash and I do like to see the results that I'm getting uh, in flash. So I leave it on for two seconds just so that I can quickly view it uh, when I've done it to make sure that it's uh, okay. Uh, and that's all really that I've got that on for. That's a total personal preference thing that you need uh, to decide if you want to do or not. Now, custom key settings. This is where I have changed uh, a little bit on there. Um, number one, obviously, is not set. I'm leaving that as it is. Uh, that's the, the circular wheel. And I do love how this shows in a graphical form now. It really is nice. Uh, button number uh, two, which is the AEL button, I've got that to switch my right and left eye. So that's how you can switch your IAF, uh, and it works wonderfully. So that's how I've got the AEL button set. Now I can do that now because I don't have to hold a button any longer to get IAF. And that's the button I used to press for IAF. So now I'm just using it to switch between the IAF. Um, the number uh, AF on is just AF on. I, I love that, like it's back button focus, so I've got that as AF on. Uh, number four is staying of the, the shutter type, so that's how you can turn uh, between mechanical and uh, silent shutter and things like that, electronic shutter. I haven't changed that uh, at all. And touch operation select is great because uh, you can actually turn off the touch uh, on the back of the screen. And that's fantastic if you're totally dealing with looking for you the, through the viewfinder sometimes and if your nose is, is causing issues and things like that. Um, so that's, that's also a great feature. If I go to number two, uh, number one is just focus standard, I haven't changed. Uh, IAF is uh, the center button on that wheel, and I'm not sure why you'd need that because it automatically grabs IAF. So I'm gonna have to think about that. Someone in the comment may wanna let me know why that's there and what the reason is. It might be, I suppose, uh, if you're shooting in another mode or whatever, you can immediately force IAF if you want to press into that button. Uh, focus magnifier I've got on the other side. The reason why I like that is because if I go into manual mode, uh, I'll just show you. Uh, if I switch this to manual focus, let me just move it over to manual. Uh, now when you zoom, um, it will automatically uh, go in. But sometimes uh, that won't happen. So I like to actually just press that there 
uh, on that wheel, click into it, and then it will come into into it like that. It, it's just a way that I can zoom in at any time and check what their focus is. So I really do like that feature. And that's why uh, I like to put the zoom uh, there, and then I can move that around to where I want to check, uh, and then zoom in. So that's the reason why I've got that set. Um, I'll have to see how that goes though, but that's the way I've got that set at this stage. Let me just put that back to AFC. Um, back to the menus. Uh, so that's why I've got um, focus magnifier set there. Uh, number four is ISO and number five is zoom. That's where I got the clear image zoom that I sh showed you before, uh, which is really great. Uh, you know, just to be able to click down here and then zoom. I can't do it at the moment though, but that's that's how you do it. You've got to be in movie mode um, or JPEG. All right, so let's keep going into here. Uh, we'll go to number three. Uh, white balance is set on C1. Uh, and at this stage, I've also got the focus area on C2. Um, so those are this. So C1 will give me uh, white balance, as you can see through here. Uh, and if I press C1, that's how you get to your focus uh, area. And that's how you'll choose your wide and stuff like that or, or tracking and or whatever else that you wanted to actually uh, click on. So that's C1 and C2. Um, let me go back into here. Um, and then number four obviously will be on your lens. I haven't got a button on my lens. Uh, I could if I use my zoom, the 70 to 200. Uh, that's where you can have focus or anything else that you want to actually put on that. Um, I used to use, I think, IAAF, uh, so I'll have to see. I'm, I'm going to play around with that to see what I'll actually set on that lens. Um, all right, so that's that one all set. Um, custom key one just follows uh, the same, and uh, the custom key play. The only thing I've changed here is rating, because I wanted to use... When you press play, uh, play, I'll show you in a second, uh, I wanted to have that so it will add the rating onto the camera. Uh, and what it does is uh, this. So if I click on to play, now if I then press the C3 button, um, oh, you can't see it because it's on the menu. Yeah, it won't work because it's coming through the HDMI. Uh, if I press the C3, you get your ratings up, uh, which works great. So that's how that's actually set. Um, Function menu set, uh, this is what I've got in my menu at this stage. So I've just got touch operation, so I can turn touch on and off. Um, I've got focus area in here, uh, audio signals, because often when I'm working uh, in a wedding and things like that, and I want to go completely quiet, I can turn all the audio signals off directly through here. Uh, I can turn steady shot off if I'm, if I'm on a tripod. Uh, so that's another thing that's handy to have there, metering mode. Uh, flash mode as well is all inside here, so you can determine what flash mode you want to uh, be in. Uh, then down here I've got flash compensation, uh, automatic white balance, so it's priority set in that auto white balance of ambient, ambi white. It's just a quicker way to get to your menus. Uh, and then I've got creative style in there as well. Uh, now I might change that because I never alter the creative style, so I'm probably going to alter that. That is a possibility if you're using the A7 III because then you can choose different styles and things like that. Um, but you can not You can change styles in here, but they're things that I never actually change. It would be more picture profiles uh, that sh probably should be in there. So I am going to change that uh, to something else. I have to work out what I'm going to put in there. Uh, that's obviously auto record level. Uh, I've got that for when I'm doing video so I can change my levels and AF tracking sensitivity uh, is there as well, so I can change that depending on if I want to be shooting sports or something slow, things like that, or, or I want to maintain focus with them going behind bushes and things like that. Uh, and that's obviously the shoot mode, which is not available. Um, that's only available for in video. So that's what I've got in all of those, um, uh, the FN menu. My dial settings haven't changed, so I don't use them. I'm going to have to learn and play around with those, I think, because you can put different things in, like your ratings and stuff like that. Um, let me just come back. Um, my dial setup haven't changed either. I've changed nothing on um, this at all, so there's nothing being changed on 10 of 11. 
and 12, uh, 11 of 11, I haven't changed anything either. Uh, I haven't changed anything in these network settings. They're all exactly the same as what they were. Um, so there's nothing that's been altered here uh, that are in there. So this is what you can choose to set your ratings. Uh, now, the reason why I only put one or two, you can add more if you want to do that, but I really only want to have something that's special to Raiders 1 and then really special for me to Raiders 2. So when I press that C3 button when I'm in the play mode, I can rate the image immediately and then that comes through into Lightroom. Uh, you can put all five on and then all you have to do is press the button the five times and, and it will come up to rating five. But I really only need one and two. One will be a, a good image, Two will be something really good that I want to might want to share straight away. Uh, so that's what that's done, and then you have to set that to a quick key, which I've set on C3. Um, I haven't changed anything through here at all, uh, so none of those. Select playback media. Uh, you can put that on. I've made that slot one. That's your your fastest um, slot. Um, you can do obviously the second slot if you want to do that. I haven't changed anything else. The only thing that jump setting has changed, I believe, is this is where you can do it from that dial where you can jump to ratings and things like that. I haven't set this yet. Uh, I believe that you can change this and see you can go rating and things like that. Uh, so it, it's interesting. So it will just jump when you're looking at images and take you just to your rated images. So this is something I am going to have to have a look at and just see how it works. So it looks like it's going to be the front dial uh, as well, so uh, I suppose you could say instead of at the moment, I don't know if this is going to work because we're on the monitor, uh, that's how you get through your images, all right? So I think, I'm not sure if I've rated one, I'll just see if I have. Uh, let me change this jump image and I'll go now to say rating as one. All right, let me come out of it, I'll press play. There you go, so it's only grabbed the two now. So that's really handy, so if you do only want to see what's rated, uh, that's fantastic, and that's one thing that you can do with this, so it is really good, and I've only rated one, so that's the reason why it's only showing me uh, actually one image. So that's pretty cool, uh, and I may use that. It might be something that I'd put that into the quick menu, actually looking at that, because that's very handy if, um, if you um, want to sort of uh, limit it to only the ones that are there, instead of looking at it and doing this which will go through every single thing by using that front um, wheel. All right, so I'm gonna to have to look at that because I think that's very handy and I might put that in the uh, menu at the end, image jump setting. Um, I haven't changed anything in here at all, so nothing's been changed in that menu. Uh, I noticed too now with the NTSC PAL menu, uh, you no longer get warnings anymore. Fantastic, thank you so much, Sony. Before, if you change to uh, NTSC, if you're in PAL, every time you turn the camera on, it gives you a warning, and I hated that. Because sometimes I want to shoot in those modes. Um, at the same, if you want to shoot in PAL, it will no longer give you warning, so thank you so much for that. Uh, touch operation has to be on, otherwise you can't use the touch screen at the back. Uh, touch panel, uh, I want touch panel and pad because I want to use the uh, LCD as well as the uh, touch panel. Uh, the, uh, the EVF as well, um, so that's really good. So I've selected both of those. Um, touchpad settings, you can uh, change this offset, this whole screen. You can obviously, if, you, if it annoys you, you can just do the left half or lower right or whatever you want to deal with. I just use the whole screen, it's just what I like to work on. Um, so that's the way that works. Uh, there's nothing that I've changed in here at all. Uh, that's all kept exactly the same. Uh, I've not changed anything there in setup four. Uh, copyright info I've still got to put in. I haven't done that yet, and that's I'm glad I've done this because that will remind me to uh, to do that. So that's an important thing that you should put on all of your images. Um, so I must still do that. Record media settings. This is such a better dialog box than what we had previously. Um, 
Obviously now you can say prioritize record media in slot one, that's your fastest slot. If you look in the side of the camera, you can see slot one is the, uh, S X, uh, the SD2, slot one is the SD1 card, so I'm prioritizing recording on slot one. Uh, then I'm also doing sort for raw JPEG. Now this is how you just choose through here what you want to do. You could do simultaneous um, Video, movies. Now when, if I'm doing video alone, I will do simultaneous video, so it will put video onto both cards. So that's one way of doing it. Uh, you can also do simultaneous movie and um, uh, as well, and also uh, video, but I like to do suit, uh, sort JPEG and RAW. Uh, now what that will give me, it gives me um, RAW on uh, slot 1, and it gives me on slot 2 JPEG, which is the slower card. It also gives me the movie files on slot 1 as well. And that's fantastic. Auto switch media, I'm not sure what that does. I think it might be something to do with if one card fills up, um, it may go onto the other card. But someone might be able to let me know in the comment box down below. I'm, I'm thinking that's what auto switch media probably is. Uh, but yeah, I'm not sure. So that's a great dialer box. That's so much easier than what we previously had to use uh, in Sony. It was terrible. Uh, this is terrific. So thank you very much, Sony. Select record folder, don't change. I haven't changed anything in that at all. If ever you do have a problem with your card, you can use that recover image database. And then there's just version setting, which should show you version five, which it does. And it also gives you your lens version as well. Uh, and the only other thing is this is what I've put in my um, quick menu at the moment. Uh, so I've put flash compensation up the top. This is fantastic because this stops me going into most of the other menus. I use flash compensation all the time. Uh, electronic first curtain shutter, uh, you can turn off. It's probably not on at the moment because I'm on uh, electronic shutter. If you were uh, had it on mechanical shutter, uh, let me just see if I can switch it. If you had it on mechanical shutter, uh, you'll find now that the E front curtain shutter is on. Now if you're dealing with flash and you're getting strobing, bands that start to appear, uh, or even if you're getting striping or banding in your image, you can turn the electronic front uh, curtain shutter off. It does say that if you're over say one thousandth of a second that you should actually turn that off. For some reason with Profoto I never have to, it doesn't affect it at all, I never get the banding with Profoto. Uh, I do with the Sony flashes though which is interesting. If I put my Sony um, strobes on there, um, it, it will band if I go uh, too high in a shutter speed. Uh, but the Profoto never bands so I never have to turn it off and that's generally what I'm using. Uh, live view setting display, you can turn that on or off if you're in studio, obviously you will turn that off. Um, if you just want to see what your exposure is doing, you turn it on. S and Q settings haven't changed. File format, uh, I just put that, sorry, uh, I want to put S and Q settings in there in case if I do want to do slow motion. But I generally like to do it in post. I don't like to do S and Q really that much at all because I find the quality suffers a little bit. Uh, you're much better off to slow it down in post. I also like file format so I can quickly come in here and change the file format as well. Uh, and touch operation on or off. Again, I've got that on the trash can, but it's just there if I need to uh, have it as well. So that's menu one, and then menu two, I've just got format uh, in there uh, at this stage. I am gonna probably add, like I said, a couple of other things uh, will be put into the menu uh, as well. Um, so that that's basically all the menu that's there. Like I said, that's uh, using the FM menu will bring that up. My quick keys basically are uh, that will switch your right eye, the AEL button, you can see it's telling you there. Um, left eye auto or right eye auto. Um, and then you've got uh, my C1, C2 button that I, I showed you how I programmed those, those all before. Um, so I hope that's a bit of assistance if you are wondering how to set yours up. Um, like I said, it's, it's just my base setup now and then I might play around with it in the coming days to sort of see what I want to do with it. Um, you know, and, I, and then I'll think about what I want to change. I still want to add a few more things into that uh, quick menu, the favorites menu as well. And I did have a couple of things in the um, FN menu that I was going to change, like the profiles, uh, which, you know, you don't have on the A9. So th there's still a few things that I'm going to tweak uh, as well. But fantastic. What a great update. I love the fact you can now protect your images. Um, the focus is just insane. Like I said, I'll do a video about that in the coming days. Um, 
it, it really is just a wonderful update from Sony that they've given us for nothing. I can't believe it. I'm still in shock how good this firmware update is. Uh, and I'm really excited now about uh, using this camera. Let me know in the comment box down below if there's anything you'd like to add to this, if you think I've missed anything. Uh, apart from that, guys, I'll see you all in the next video. Bye for now.